Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Steve here at Fresh Bikes. Uh, just doing another little video here about my old, uh, new Norco Fluid VLT. Um, one of the things that I get asked all the time about an e-bike, and I've been riding e-bikes for about four years now, is this question. Are you ready for it? Can you guess what it is? Okay, here it comes. Hey man, cool e-bike. Is that the new Norco Fluid VLT? Rad. Hey, how far can you ride on that? Like, what's the range on that bike? Yep, that's right. Number one question that I get asked is, how far can you ride on your e-bike? And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that factor into that conversation. So I'm hoping that today's video uh, kind of shed some light on it. Um, of course, this one will be specific to this bike. So, you know, your mileage may vary depending on what kind of bike you're riding and uh, a few of the other uh, uh, things that we're gonna talk about here. So hop on and uh, enjoy. Okay, the first thing that you got to factor in is your motor and the main consideration out of that is how much torque uh, this motor can put down and what's its peak power so you know that's gonna vary depending on the brand for example the Bosch uh, SX which is brand new comes out of the performance line it cranks out 55 Newton meters of torque and it has a peak power uh, rating of 600 watts the next one is a hidden uh, factor but it's uh, definitely important it's the size of your battery uh, bigger the battery the more power the more range the more distance that you get so uh, in some cases you know we're seeing up to a thousand eleven hundred watt hour batteries and we're seeing all the way down to sort of around the 300 this Bosch SX uh, system launched with a new 400 watt hour battery and of course the devil is in the details uh, with batteries you know because the types of cells the size how they pack them in there then how the motor manages the power there's a lot of other factors but when you have your motor and you have your battery you kind of have the two key things as the baseline to sort of understand what you're gonna be working with okay so the next thing after you figure out your motor and your battery is modes what's a mode well basically uh, that's the level of assist that you're uh, motor and battery are able to provide to you and every e-bike is going to be very different They've got all kinds of names boost turbo hyper all kinds of stuff going on in there um, But they all kind of have the same idea where they have multiple levels of assist. So the you know more uh, Power that you apply to the the system for assist, you know the more power you get to power yourself up the hill so on the new Bosch there's a number of modes you can actually deploy onto your bike um, but you get a to be able to pick four modes total uh, at any one time so I've got four modes engaged on this bike um, so I've got my wireless remote over here here's my indicator here you can also change your modes on the Bosch with this button here of course I use the wireless one over here so with the Bosch SX I've got my four modes here I've got tour plus which is green I've got the blue button blue color which is uh, auto mode I've got purple which is EMTB and I've got red which is the turbo mode the max power so each of these modes is going to give you a different feel and again every e-bike is different so you could do a ride on the tour plus mode which is the least amount of assist and in some cases get up to 30 kilometers of pedaling and you could also ride in full turbo the whole time and maybe get only 13 or 15 kilometers so there's a big uh, difference there between the level of assists and how much power is administered and then what the end result is for performance so lots of things to factor in when you're uh, looking at modes not all modes are created equal so the Bosch app that I talked about in my last video uh, which is called the flow app right here Gives you a lot of information when it's connected to your bike. Uh, so it connects via Bluetooth to the uh, drive unit. 
and uh, it's really cool. So one of the things uh, it'll tell you first off is your battery charge. So it's saying currently I've got 93% battery. Um, and then the big thing here is it'll actually tell you how much range it expects you to have based on what mode you're in. So I'm in Tour Plus right now, which is the easiest, least amount of assist. It's telling me I got 25 kilometers. And so if I change that mode over here and increase the level of assist, watch what happens. So now I'm going into uh, change it up into auto mode. Well, auto is really cool. It says now I've got 32K of range potentially available. If I go to EMTB, I've got 17 kilometers. And if I ride the rest of this ride in boost, I've got about 13 kilometers left. So you can see here, there's a lot of factors that, that kick in when somebody asks you, how much range do you have? Okay, so what I thought I'd do today was uh, I'd do a ride in the auto mode, which I find to be the most natural feeling, but still get that e-bike boost kind of assist feel uh, on the bike. So I'm gonna do my whole regular ride today in auto mode and just see how far I can go, how much battery life I get. Um, you know, the trails here, are, it's all single track. There's really no pavement or gravel to climb. I can avoid all that. It's gonna be off-road for sure. Yeah, and the other thing that you gotta factor in when you're uh, looking at range on any bike is your size. The bigger you are, the less range you're gonna get. It's just simple math, and I'm no mathematician, but the heavier the rider, the more uh, the motor has to work to provide the same amount of output and power and uh, versus a you know, lighter rider. So a 250 pound rider and a 125 pound rider are gonna get two very different results for range. I'm right around 200 pounds, so happy middle ground, I guess, but uh, just as a point of reference. And so I'm gonna just kind of do my typical ride and see what kind of results I get out of it relative to uh, the uh, battery life, how much uh, climbing I can do, all the other stuff. So hang on. Stick with me and uh, let's see how this one ends up and I'll share the results of the ride at the end of the video. Okay, so here we are at Thornhill. So just to share kind of an overview of the network. Lots of trails, blues mostly, a couple blacks, a couple greens. Pretty big network but super fun to ride and perfect for testing e-bikes because it's just kind of loops all the way through the network here. So you can get lots of laps. What goes up must come down. You are here. Well, I think as James Brown once said, uh, you gotta get up to get down. So first we gotta get up. All right, let's go. Uh, the trails around uh, Thornhill, lots of good climbing trails. Nothing too techy. Definitely a little bit of punchy stuff like this, mixed in with lots of flow. This bike handles it no problem. Another little punchy climb section. Eww. Such good dirt today. After a bit of rain, lots of grip. It's perfect. It's coming up on your right here. Awesome, thanks man. Back into some more single tracky climbing. Still so fun here. This trail network is in uh, Vancouver area, Lower Mainland. If you haven't had a chance to ride it, it's out here in Maple Ridge. Come out, check it out. It is uh, pretty epic for a small little network in the Lower Mainland. It's no North Shore, but it'll do in a pinch for sure.
so a quick check-in and I uh, just got to the top I've done 5.93 kilometers and average speed of just around 8k 45 minutes I've been fuffing around a little bit but that's the distance so far I haven't even gone down once yet and over on the flow app is saying uh, I've got about 66% of my battery still remaining it's estimating in the current mode I'm gonna get about another 10k of riding out of this but I think that's because it's factoring in all I've done is climb so I think I'm definitely gonna get more than 10k but we'll see here we go time to go down okay let's go down <laughs> So that was uh, first real lap down. I'll do another little check at the top, see where we're at for battery. Give myself some range anxiety when I get to the top. This is lap two. Now I've done almost uh, 10K, 9.67K of distance. And it's saying I've got about 52% of my battery left. Okay, wait for another check-in. I'm the back in.
more climbing. Back to the top. Uh, even on an e-bike, some climbs are steep. Back up at the top, now done 14.67 kilometers of riding and according to the uh, app I've got about 33% of my battery still remaining in the auto mode. It's estimating about another 5k of range so we'll see, give her another few laps. Okay we're gonna hit uh, OSR now, let's go. mentioned earlier my riding is all single track there is a big gravel climb here to get you up to the top but I'm gonna be taking the climbing trail way more fun and more realistic for how I enjoy riding so let's go so blazing saddles is a uh, climbing trail here on Thornhill and I'm gonna argue it's the best climbing trail I've ever ridden. You can fight me on that. But it is so amazing for e-bikes. It is definitely, uh, you know, people with e-bikes talk about uphill flow. It's a thing. And this trail has it in shovel loads of dirt. So awesome to climb. So fun. Boring gravel or fun single track. We got it all here at Thornhill. Okay, checking in, 17.1K. And uh, let's now see what the battery life is. Battery life is showing 23%. Estimating 4K to go. I'll definitely get more than 4K. A lot of downhill still.
Okay, so the last part of the climb is now done. Back to the very top. You and uh, we're at 20 kilometers for the ride today. Uh, so let's check see what the battery life is looking like. I will note that it's turned orange and I'm down to one bar. So over on the Bosch app, it's telling me I've got 11% left in the tank. And it's also suggesting, hey, battery empty. The additional power more 250 battery gives you extra range. That's a range extender you can get that would mount where the water bottle is. So pretty cool, but Let's get the final results when I get to the bottom. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back at the truck and we've got red now so you know it's getting low let's see where we're at okay so the ride total distance 23.18 kilometers okay so it's telling me that I've got about 9% of the battery left probably about two kilometers and uh, yeah suggesting that I should get the power more add-on so I'm thinking I could easily get 25k riding today all off road if I wanted to, but I got to go home for dinner. Okay. So according to Strava, the, uh, all-knower of everything I do on a bike. Uh, it's saying the total ride was 23.24 kilometers. Moving time was two hours, 11 minutes. Uh, elevation gain, 735 meters. Average power, 193 watts. I burned 1,700 calories and my average speed was 10.6 kilometers. All right, well, there you go. So definitely uh, uh, gives me a, a good baseline for what this bike is capable of. Uh, I think I could definitely get some more distance out of it. I don't know that I would need to ride in auto mode all the time. I find that the Eco Plus or Tour Plus mode, uh, which is the low assist, is pretty good for a lot of 
the stuff I ride. Um, and I find like the boost, there's a couple of spots where I could use it, but for this type of riding, I don't think I totally need it. So I'd say, you know, 25K is probably a realistic expectation. I can probably get around, I think around 800 meters. I'll probably do another video to try and see what the max out is on this bike. But I just wanted to kind of throw it in here for like a usual ride and sort of share what uh, this bike is capable of early days still, but uh, we'll see what I can uh, get out of it. All right, thanks for tuning in and thanks for checking out this video. Like and subscribe, you know what to do down there.